Hey everyone, this is Dr. Dylan Peckis with Optimal Circadian Health. Today, we're going to cover your questions on passing out Lyme cone infection circadian tips, pandas, not what you're thinking, and dead mitochondria. So make sure you stay tuned for this Ask Me Anything. Hey everyone, Dr. Dylan Peckis with Optimal Circadian Health. Today, we're gonna to cover your questions on really important topics here because there's many times of whether you're, you are someone who is passing out and or anytime you get up, losing that feeling, feeling like you gotta lean over or whether it's the moment you wake up in the morning, like where I used to be, or throughout the day of where you're just staying there and now having to like lean on something or feel like you're passing out waiting in line at the grocery store or you're someone with Lyme, a history of it, the co-infections and being in a space of where you just feel overwhelmed with everything that's showing up in your blood, babesiosa or lachiosis, all of these things and being able to, you know, finally get some headway here on during your confusion not know what's going on to a place of where, okay, these infections know what that's all about and being able to dive into certain things of where, yes, circadian is in our name. What should you know about that? And then other components here of uh, a rare condition, which is very relevant for someone out there watching this right now, pandas, psychiatric, sorry, pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infection and this question on dead mitochondria of being able to know like is there a certain point of where the bottom's gone all the way out and you're not able to get back out of it and why you're someone who gets to a floor and stays stuck there for so long of why no matter what you do you may get a little bit better but so many times you're getting brought back to square one and why that is and how you can be able to rebuild those mitochondria no matter what has gone on for you in the past now and no matter what your dna okay dna exists i'm just i'm just making fun of genetics uh less important but we'll dive into that but before we go any further you know what i'm gonna do my disclaimer here i'm not your doctor this is not medical advice always work with your licensed healthcare provider to make decisions in your health everything here is my opinion or based on things I've learned from my research. There you go. Back to the road here. Now to this first one, passing out. And this one particular comes from Angie. And she essentially describes where every single time she gets her blood taken, which is a lot based on how bad she is right now. And Pretty much even it's just two, four vials of blood, which would be about a quarter of a cup. Four vials of blood is a quarter of a cup. Each vial is about 10 to 15 mLs, which is about a tablespoon, in case you wanted to know. But why when you lose such a small amount of blood? Because you have five liters of blood. And four vials would be about 50 milliliters or 0 0.05 liters. So that's like nothing. That is one twentieth times. That's one percent of your blood volume. All right. So why are you reacting to this? Why are you being in a space where you feel like you're going to pass out? And it may not be for everyone besides Angie. It may not be a case of where you get blood drawn if you feel like you're going to pass out. It may be when you're getting up in the morning, or even trying to sit upright, or when you're at work and getting exhausted and wanting to just pass out, or a lot of times people when they're feeling so weak and now top of the stairs feeling lightheaded like they're going to pass out having to lean against the the stair rail or just take it easy halfway through all of that is super relevant here because passing out is a very scary thing of where one you have to immediately take action to be in a place of where you're not in a dangerous position there's also the embarrassment of this happening again Oh my God, and everyone watching, either people who don't know what's going on or your own family who's seen this time and time again and 
it makes them as worried as you are. And of course, the danger of this, passing out and then hitting your head on something or being in a position where you pass out at the wrong place. I mean, even while driving a car, things I heard of that nature. So being able to understand what's going on behind this, so critically important. So passing out, this is a nervous system cardiovascular response and it's failing in people with this chronic fatigue picture. What's going on? So your heart over here <laughs> has a lot of these over here. These are mitochondria that I'm pointing towards. And when your mitochondria aren't working well, your heart's not working well. Your heart is the third most mitochondrial dense tissue throughout your entire body. So when your mitochondria aren't working and it's showing up there, that's a really bad sign. This is why so many people go have chronic fatigue for a long time and end up with something like POTS, where they're having these issues with passing out because they can't maintain their blood pressures. And so what is going on in, in this particular scenario? So one, like I said, it's a really bad sign of systemic issues afoot. But what's really going on at the core here, when you're having these issues, your sympathetic nervous system is already doing everything as can to be, like making sure that those blood vessels are tight, 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 tight. But the thing is, when they're so tight already, you're not able to tighten them anymore. Okay, so it may be a bit confusing, but follow me here. Your blood pressure is already low, but also your the the blood vessels are already maximally stimulated by the nervous system. So when there is a challenge, standing up, going up the stairs, going from laying to sitting, getting your blood draw, there's no more ability to contract and that's when you'll pass out. That's as simple as it is. And so your nervous system is essentially locked in place like this and unable to get to a place of where it needs to be working properly. So it's really two issues here. Your nervous system is not working well. It's been to a place where it's just in this constant contraction. It's stimulating through the sympathetics contraction. And then also your mitochondria because the other side of the cardiovascular equation besides the, the vessels is the heart. And because your mitochondria aren't working as well, your heart's not beeping as well, it can't create that pressure. Okay, and that's why your blood vessels are having to kick into overdrive with the sympathetics here. So it's not what the cardiologist or the hematologist say where, oh, it's your ferritin's low. That's the biggest crock of crap I ever heard. No, it's an issue with the blood vessels, but it's really an issue with your mitochondria. And so when you're someone who's passing out having POTS, that's why I know you're pretty far down the spectrum in end stage. I don't say that to alarm you. I say that to educate you and give you the knowledge that that's bottom, right? That's very bottom of the function there. And when that's where you are, that's when you need to be taking action as much as you can, as much as your family can help you with. Because when you're not, that's a very hard place to get out of. And you need to be able to have powerful tools to get you out of there. Because if not, it's more passing out. It's more being with silly willies who say your ferritin is low, which it may be. And they just try to give you iron here, the supplements or infusions. But in terms of the mechanisms I explained, what about that involved iron? I'll give you a hint. It's a number between one and negative one, zero. Absolutely nothing. And those are the, the well-meaning clowns that a lot of times you find yourself working with. They don't know either. It's not their fault. They're well-meaning people. But the, the education you get through medicine, medical school, residency, when you're out there, it's not equipped to handle these issues. It can help manage symptoms, don't get me wrong. But being able to undo these things and get it to a level of where your lifestyle is set up, where you're healing, that's not where they thrive. It's just not. Now they thrive in other areas, don't get me wrong, but it's just a place where you want to be able to be working with the right people. So that's Angie's questions with passing out there. And we'll move to the next question here, which is about Lyme cone infections. And yes, 
I spelled the title on this wrong. So if you wanna go ahead and make fun of me, that's absolutely fine. Do that in the comments below. And then I also wanna remind you, if you wanna be getting your own questions answered here, send us your questions. Now you're gonna go ahead and send it to us on Facebook Messenger because it's just way too hard to gather it from all the comments. Just send them all there to that little pipeline. This link, m.me forward slash conquer dot fatigue will take you to Facebook Messenger with our support staff. Send them a little message and you'll be good to go. All right, awesome. So with these Lyme cone infections, the, the question here is from my good friend, we'll just call her F, and she asks in terms of, okay, you, you get Lyme, I'm paraphrasing here, you have Lyme and you have all these other cone infections, Babesiosa or Lachiosis, anything else you can name, that will be in there. Why is that? When you're someone who gets Lyme, yes, you may have been bitten by a tick. That's obviously the trigger event. But why isn't everyone having Lyme who gets bit by a tick? Why is everyone with Lyme not getting co-infections? That's the smart question you need to be asking. And it has to do, again, when we rank the top three most energy mitochondrial dense systems, we already said the heart was number three. All right, what are one and two? One is your nervous system. Number two is your immune system. So when you get a Lyme infection, this is telling me your immune system doesn't have the energy to function properly. And especially Lyme here, because this is what makes it such a, a difficult to treat issue. Because yeah, you can blast things with antibiotics, do multiple rounds, get on the herbs, the tinctures, all that stuff. But here's the thing. Lyme is always going to hide in the lowest energy system. It's going to find a place to hide. And when you're suffering with Lyme, guess where it's going to go? Because if the immune system number two has been knocked out, that means number one, your nervous system is already failing as well. That's when you're getting neuro Lyme, either outright or it's hiding in your neurons. And then it will also hide in your red blood cells. And as that's going on, that is going to drain more and more energy out of the system because your red blood cells are designed to transduce energy throughout your body. All right. Don't need to get into the biophysics of that right now, but just know it's a transfer of photons all over the place, all that great stuff. Your red blood cells look like a satellite dish for a reason. Now, with that, this is why so many people with Lyme get stuck with this for so long. Because you get stuck thinking, oh, it's just a Lyme infection. Pill for that. Oh, it's over here. It's neuroinvasive. Oh, we need to step it up. And then all these other infections come in. And then you're doing different antibiotics. And then you're on ozone therapy. And then you're, you're doing all this stuff. And it's just a crutch for the immune system. But it's not allowing it to actually be in a spot where it's able to bounce back properly. It's kind of like brushing your teeth, but still eating candy all the time, all right? You're putting stuff in there, it's making things worse. You brush it away, but then the candy keeps coming back in. For here, it's you could be clearing some immune things out, but then you're just pushing it to another compartment of your body of where your immune system isn't gonna go. And when your immune system is all tired out, just like you, it's not gonna go hunting in those different areas. So when the mitochondrial density is enhanced, in your immune system and all the different cell types, the lymphocytes, everything, all that good stuff, then it's able to properly hunt out Lyme. So yes, having something to address Lyme is important, but also having your system in a way of where once the Lyme is clearing out, your immune system is also able to prevent more from coming in and go around and hunt out all the remaining Lyme, Babesiosa, things of that nature. And this is why a lot of our clients with Lyme, co-infections, getting your system to a higher function is of the critical most importance because you can be blasting with ozone all day. You can be doing all the antibiotics. But again, when your system isn't able to handle the stressor, that's when those co-infections will come in. So think of it like this. Your system let the door open for Lyme, which is pretty common. And when there's more and more damage, now the door is more open for other 
organisms come in. All those crazy things you see on a blood smear, a blood test. And, and that's what's going on. So yes, you need to have an approach of where you deal with the, the infection itself, but also a bigger part of it, the base of this pyramid is being able to make sure your immune system, it's communicating properly. It has a good rhythm and circadian component to it. And also mitochondria are on board producing the energy to allow all these things to happen from the superoxide first, that's gonna kill some of the bacteria to being able to really hunt and find those last remaining things. And also being able to get you to a point of where, I mean, avoiding the really bad alternative methods here where you get blasted with a bunch of stuff, now you're herxing or having a die-off reaction, massive inflammation on top of the already massive inflammation you already have, and now being a place where you're with someone, do some antibiotics for a couple of weeks, oh yeah, you're gonna get better, maybe you'll get worse, and then you get worse, and then you are worse, and then you stay worse. I see it time and time again, and it is frustrating. And I can't imagine how frustrating to go through it personally. So being able to have these core issues addressed and then dealing with the manifesting component. Because again, yes, Lyme is one thing, but that's just how the breakdowns in the system are manifesting for you. Okay. And then the other piece to this, because she did ask about the nervous system here. Actually, not that one yet. We want to go um, here, pandas. So my good friend, Miss F, we'll just call her Miss F. She also asked about pandas on behalf of her son here. And so pandas, like I was saying, is pediatric. It's a mouthful. Pediatric, autoimmune, neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infection. It's a mouthful. What it means is that there's an infection early on. How many of you have had strep throat when you were younger? Probably most of you. And you clear it out. Not all kids are that lucky. And especially when you're a mother with these issues, because you then give your children your mitochondria. And that's just a, a handoff of, of bad mitochondria there. And so as that's going on, now there's more susceptibility, because this is why I wanted to link it to the Lyme discussion here. When you don't have the good mitochondria, this is when infections get the really bad endpoints. Because with this, what happens is called kindling. All right. You don't get an infection and have a system wide response because you're a bad person or made mistakes in a former life. It's because the whole system, again, remember that nervous system component, especially, is falling apart in big, big ways. And then you add strep in or Lyme or any of those other things it's going to cause things to go haywire because a lot of the immune system operates with your nervous system. That is the nervous system will kind of help guide through chemotaxis and all that stuff to where the infections will be, all that good stuff. But the important thing to know here, this is very similar to when someone gets EBV. Now they have chronic fatigue for 10, 20 years. Herpes is, is also one less common a more common race recently is COVID, COVID long haulers, because there are some species and bacteria that are going to be more neuroinvasive. Now, Streptococcus is also one of these, more so in kids, but the endpoint is nonetheless. There will be nervous system stress into some of the most active circuitry, the limbic system being one of the primary ones. And this is why, like so many of our clients there is a lot of stress and all those emotions going on and running because your limbic system is an overdrive that's why a lot of times in the breakthrough calls i mean many times we can find ourselves in tears because obviously all the heartbreak associated with these symptoms and how they can truly wreck your life i mean really that's what happens unfortunately but also all those moments of where you're in the suffering, of where you don't know where to look. And then that will cause emotions to run high and then it'll really kick things off in the limbic system and really go into a state of overdrive. So it's going on here. Streptococcus, 
will then be in the limbic system. The limbic system, guess what that's hooked up to? Your sympathetics. Sympathetics, guess what that is hooked up to? Your adrenals. And then you'll get this adrenal dysfunction. It can be overactive. And when things are overactive in your body, they're causing free radicals. When they're causing free radicals, they're forming damage in those tissues. They're causing proteins which your immune system normally wanted to attack. It changes them. Now your immune system is attacking them. And this is how this becomes a autoimmune issue. You may want to replay that back a few times. <laughs> really critical information there. Or you may want to write that in the comments to help other people and also help yourself when you're taking notes. Always love when you got to take those notes inside the comments to help yourself be attached, really be able to, to learn these important lessons. So that's why pandas, it, it, it's really the, the adolescent version of an EBV chronic fatigue, things of that nature. It doesn't look exactly the same, obviously, but it's something of where when you get the mitochondria circadian rhythms going, nervous system's coming down. Got to have other things to calm the nervous system down as well. That's a lot what we help our clients with as well. Either certain techniques or also working with them one-on-one -on -one to help them get out of that emotional space on their own time and power because that's really where the, the power lies for yourself. And once you're doing that, that's when not only his mitochondria are going to be doing better, you're doing better, everyone's less stressful, nervous system calms down, mitochondria get better, you're out there playing together, you're in a space of where he's able to look forward at the next few years and knowing he can be a, a normal kid, a normal adolescent, a normal young adult who's able to plan out college, what I want to do, and be able to leave this illness behind and you being able to see him out there succeeding just like you know he can. That's the beauty of all this. So that's how pandas comes together with the that last component there where I was talking with the now my immune system, I mean my nervous system, is forgetting the previous point, the Lyme co-infections here. So that's how that all comes together. So really awesome question. I just know, Miss F, that you knew they were going to be linked together. And if you want to be able to be able to have those moments just like her, where she was like, oh, wait, awesome, cool. This is making more sense. Send us your questions over here, m.me forward slash conquer dot fatigue and that'll take you right to our support staff's Facebook Messenger. Maria will take care of you there. Get your question, put it in the queue for me, and I'll be able to help you out here. Now the next question here circadian tips. And so Miss Steph again asked a, a question like what are what are some of the tips here and, and all that. And you can always go Google them, but I, I wanted to really emphasize this because there are a lot of ways this can go wrong. Because yes, you can go Google good circadian rhythm. You can go read Sachin Panda's book. It'll all like be great and gravy here. But the thing is, it's not so much about, you know, having a light box in front of you or some sort of stimuli like that and be like, okay, my circadian rhythm's good to go. It, it's there's so many details because people don't understand how this system really works. And it's not this like, you know, that body clock you see of where like, oh, your liver at 4 p.m. and all that crazy stuff. Knowing how the system works depends a lot on something known as melanopsin. And this is one of the first things we, we teach our clients and be able to really show them how this all comes together. Melanopsin is a protein that is one of the main circadian gears. And there's so many ways it can fall apart based on the stressors in your life, the environment you're in, the, the foods you're eating, the supplements you're taking, how your mitochondria, all these different things. And if those aren't addressed, you can go out on a camping trip and just like be living La Vida Circadia. And guess what? Things will not change because there are so many details that we found and have known to be part of that foundation and be able to get them all right and be consistent with those details. Because let's be honest, people, when you have like a, a sheet of five things and you're given that, like how people aren't really super consistent with that all the time. And when you miss one detail, 
it's now making Melanops not work. Everything's falling apart, and now you're like, oh, optimal circadian, blah. That that's how people will end up, and that's what we've seen time and time again. Because not only is it not giving that consistency to the foundation, but then also, what is making your circadian rhythm mechanism fall apart the most? That's why that level of detail is so critical in those one-on-ones we have with our clients, especially that first one. We take a deep dive, really see what's falling apart in your life. What are you doing? When are you doing it? And being able to really lay out that plan for you and being super individual and customized to that. Because when you're having a cookie cutter sort of plan or outline, like template, like certain programs, like, oh yeah, you do these supplements, this this works for everyone and it also works for you. Yeah, sure. The only thing you get with cookie cutter templates are a, uh, am I allowed to curse on this? You get a you get a crap cookie. We'll just say that you, you get something of where you're not having this tailored to you and ending up frustrated and then taking one of the most essential things and now throwing it in the dumpster with everything else that hasn't worked for you, and then moving forward towards all these other things that are completely continuing to hold you back from ever getting back to full function. So that's what you need to have in mind when really thinking about one of these core topics. And I mean, it's kind of like marriage of where got some tips for that. No, you're going to need a lot more than tips to get through 50 years of that. You're going to need a lot more. (laughs) You're going to need really something tailored to you and your understanding with that. And that's something that is a lot more complicated. Maybe not as complicated as circadian rhythms, but I guess I'll find out as time goes on. So that's for the circadian component. Now, the other question related to this, dead mitochondria. So a question from someone is essentially, is there a point of no return with your mitochondria? Is there a point where they're too damaged, can't be fixed? It depends. There is a point. Because with mitochondria, there's only so much damage they can take, all right? This is known as heteroplasmy rate. And all that means is that all of your mitochondria, they're designed to thrive and be together. And when they're not, this is when disease is manifesting. And so as that number gets higher and higher, there's eventually a point where it just breaks off. Think of your family or a team or at work. This is going to make sense. Heteroplasmy, the higher it is, there's less communication between everyone. The lower it is, the better. So as heteroplasmy is getting higher and higher, you know, think of it where you're you're with your family, trying to coordinate, like getting out the door, you're with your team, trying to get a project done. There's a certain point where communication's like, it's not good, but like it's it's bearable, you can deal with it. But there's a certain point where everything just like goes to crap. That's what happens with heteroplasmy rate as well. There'll be a certain point where things fall off, systems are shutting down, disease is manifesting. Lyme co-infections, heteroplasmy rate has gone too high in your immune system. Now having chronic fatigue syndrome, either Lyme, EBV, pandas, nervous system heteroplasmy has gone off that cliff. That's as simple as it is. And when that's not what you're focused on, that's when you're that person grasping at straws for supplements and working with people who are like, okay, well, it's just going to be this one thing that's going to turn everything around. You do some IV antibiotics and do some IV vitamin C and IV glutathione and we'll get everything going and then antioxidants and blah, blah. None of that is improving heteroplasmy. It's not. So the, the main ways you do that, a great circadian mechanism and also taking the best steps for your mitochondria because IV glutathione is going to make some people worse. It's going to work for a few people. And then that's who they think is, Oh, that's why it's going to work for everyone. No, it's not. But you need to have a system set up of where no matter how sensitive you are, like one of our clients recently who signed up, she's a woman who's gone through so much and supplements are something that can really throw her sideways. They really can. And we have to be so exquisitely careful if we add any in, and the ones we do, we, we do it very step by step because that's where her mitochondria are. They're on this heteroplasmic cliff. Luckily, we know exactly how to walk her back from that and be able to get her body to a function where 
she's better without the supplements. And then we can even think about sprinkling some of the most effective ones on top to really get her to the next level. But for now, we're reviving her mitochondria. So that's the way to say dead mitochondria. No, you're always able to bring them back if you know what you're doing. Because if you try something, it can bring them back to square one and even lower, square negative one. Because the beautiful thing about your mitochondria, they turn over about every three weeks. So you have a chance to go in the right direction, your mitochondria getting better, or they get worse. Dylan, what about staying the same? There is no such thing in biology, my friend. It's going to get worse. It's going to stay the same. Sorry, I mean, it's going to get worse or get better. So with that, that's why it's so important to always be moving your mitochondria up and up, being consistent in any of those ups and downs you have. Because so many people, they like do a healing program, they're, they're doing great, and then boom, step back. And that's what we, a big part of why our support that we provide with our clients. You know, I'm literally there in your email inbox and we have a lot of touch points throughout Q and A's and all that. Most of our clients are sick of us by the end, but being able to hold you throughout all those wobbles into a point of where instead of this big up and down, it's this, you know, it's this general loop-de-loop -loop with that incremental upward trend and improvement in reviving your mitochondria and taking it off of that heteroplasmic cliff because what that means for you less crashes less days of where you push yourself because life is available you want to go live it and then paying for it the next few days but that's because your mitochondria went over that cliff we take them back there and now you're able to be someone who can do something fun awesome friday night and then be fine saturday sunday and be that person who's recharged going into your weekend because your mitochondria are recharged and that's what makes this approach so beautiful here, being able to revive these things. And when they are back online, your immune system is doing better. You're more calm, you're more relaxed. You don't have to deal with all these fragrant supplements. You don't have to have this restrictive self-care routine. You can just be free, relax. You don't have to bring a forensic scientist to a restaurant. It's all good. But only if you're really powerfully addressing your mitochondria. And if, that's something that you need help with here because this is something that we do better than anyone. But here's the thing. Obviously, we need to know that that's the issue in being able to improve it and get you to a level where you're not dealing with all the issues, passing out, Lyme or anything like that. And if that's what you want, then here's what my team and myself have in store for you. So in the next 48 hours or so, we're going to open up spots on our calendar to be able to speak with you and see what's going on. Is it passing out? Is it Lyme? Is it is it something else? And being able to really see what the issue is and really how it's showing up as a severity here, all right? This is like almost going to the doctor's office. Not really, but being able to have someone help you diagnose, like, okay, when you say brain fog, I mean, like, where is that showing up? How bad is that? Because then we get an honest look at what it is and being able to see the domino effect and, and being able to be crystal clear on what the main issues are. Then we're able to show you, okay, if that's where you are, then this is where, this is what's possible for you. Where do you want to be? And then it's just like a road map here. We know exactly where you are. We know exactly where you want to be. And then we lay out steps to get you there. And if we know we can help, we'll talk about steps with us. If not, we will let you know and immediately steer you to someone else that's going to serve you better. Because this is, all about you, right? And being able to identify, okay, if you're someone who has this problem and wants to be done with it, then we want to help you. So go to optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash talk. And there you'll find a calendar link. You pick your time and then you can then go ahead and fill out a form. And that will help us know, okay, do we need to focus on brain fog? Do we need to focus on sleep? Do we need to focus on crashes? And then that helps me and my team really guide that discussion for you. Because there's so many things we can talk about, but it's really the most important things. That's the beauty of this call. And this is where so many people start, of where we've had clients where they have the Lyme issues. We have people who are suffering with fatigue so bad and pots and passing out that 
they spend most of their time in bed. But now they're spending time working. Now they're spending time out there with their kids. And I know so many people may not be at that level, but you may be here in some degrees or shade. And when you are, it's all on a spectrum. And it's really a simple question. Do you want to go further down it? Do you want to stay stuck where you are as life passes you by? Or do you want to be moving to the side of where you're back at normal, you're back to the real you, everyone's able to see it, and they're so grateful to be out there going on adventures with us, bike rides or traveling whenever coronavirus goes away, and being able to know that you can trust your own body and create the life you deserve to have. And that's what so many of our clients coming through, that's what makes them fighters. That's what allows them to get to a next level. But of course, when it's been so long, and by long, I mean more than six months, you're going to need the help because it's just more of going around in the same circle. It's all, all those other methods out there. A lot of it, I mean, most of it, really all of it is just different lipstick on the same pig. And we want to be able to help you see the real way out of this, that real glimpse of hope. If that's what you want, go to optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash talk. Go out there, fill out, you know, pick a time on the calendar, fill out the form, and then we'll see your name pop up on the calendar. So thanks so much for watching and go ahead, book your call, and I'll see you on the calendar. Talk soon. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Dylan Pekas. Make sure you subscribe to the channel here and make sure you go ahead and book a call. If there's a button there, go ahead and click it. If not, go to optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash talk. Thanks.